Hi guys, today's video is all about the Wii Terminal and MicroPython. We do have another video overviewing the Wii Terminal, and then another video um, about the Wii Terminal and CircuitPython. And finally, another video about the Wii Terminal and Arduino. So, unless you're an early bird, then those videos should be uploaded by the time you're watching this. I'll show you how to get MicroPython and Ape, and then how to use them. We'll then run some code in MicroPython. And then, finally at the end, give you an overview. Before we begin this video, I do want to say we've not been paid by the companies to do these types of videos, but companies do often send us products for free for us to play around with. So we were sent this for free. Now let's plug it into a computer and get it into bootloader mode. And you can see it's off right now, and if I put the switch to the middle, you can see that's on, and if I flick the switch over to the other side and back twice, really fastly, that'll put it in bootloader mode. So watch my computer screen as I do it. You can see, and this pops up. So this might not pop up if you're not on a Raspberry Pi. If you're not on a Raspberry Pi, it's just as easy. For example, I've just nipped up to the Mac now. I've plugged it in, and I'm going to put it into bootloader mode, so I'm going to do the double switch thing. Again. Yeah, again. Oh go and you can see it's popped up as an external um what do you call it mass storage device here and also in finder it's come up here and here you can just um drag on your uf2 file here now let's quickly get that uf2 firmware you'll need to head over to wiki.seedstudio that's seed with a triple e dot com forward slash rgpi a capital a and a capital p then you want to scroll down to here and click this one for the Wii Terminal. It will then download the firmware. It's handily put it at the bottom of Chromium, which is really helpful for me, but it might not for you. It will probably be in downloads. Finally, you just copy, or in my case, drag the firmware onto your mass storage device. Now you've got your firmware on your device. Now, it may call itself something weird and not MicroPi, but if it did, it has worked, so don't worry. Now, mine's called mine CircuitPy, probably because I was working in CircuitPython last, and it's still got all my old CircuitPython files on it. I've just got some really simple code flashing this LED um, in MicroPython. Now, incidentally, on the pinout of the Wii Terminal, my LED is connected to this pin right here, and I originally set it as 2, because that's the numbers, BCM2. But it turns out we use the numbers on the side here. So I use three. So you'd use three, five, seven, etc. I've saved this code as main.py and main.py runs the code every time you save it. So that's good for developing. So if I change um, its sleeping time to 0.5 seconds and then I save it. For some reason on my part, I have to save it twice. You can see it runs again with my edited code. Now I've also got the same or almost the same program running and I've saved it as boot.py. The only difference is that I'm flashing this blue LED, this one here. And um, what this does is it runs this code as soon as the, as the um, device has been rebooted or turned on. So I'm just going to reset it now. And you can see it flashes the blue LED, the boot.py program. So just to recap, saving your code as main.py will run the code every time you save it. But saving it as boot.py will run the code as soon as you boot up your device or you turn on your device. We managed to connect to our device um, via Fonny, so if you do prefer using Fonny, then you can use that. But bearing in mind, it did freeze quite a lot and we did have to restart my Pi quite a lot as well. RGPi has something called Ape, um, I call it Ape, it's spelled A-I-P, and we're going to show you how to get that now. Ape can do a lot of things, but I'm not going to go into detail with it, but um, some things it can do is you can enter REPL mode and run MicroPython on the um, Wii Terminal directly, and you can also get Arduino libraries and use them while writing in MicroPython. But like I said earlier, I'm not going to go too deep into that. I'm just going to show you how to get it and maybe have a REPL session. Now we need to get Ape from RGPy. So for this, we need PIP3. PIP3 already came standard on my Raspberry Pi, but if you've not got it, it's quite easy to get. And now I'm just going to type in PIP3 install RGPy dash Ape. 
Okay, done. Now, if I run ape straight off, it should come up with an error. That's because it doesn't know the path to ape. It's not in its environment variables. Now, I could change this by going into the environment variables and changing it. But just for quickness and speed, I'm just going to actually follow the path to where ape is stored. That's in dot .local, then bin. I'm now going to run ape. Noticing I've got to go dot forward slash ape to be able to run it. And now you can see that it works. Using Ape, we can now connect to our device which has MicroPython on it in REPL. And then we can have a play around with it. So to do this, you just go dot forward slash Ape shell dash C, then in um, quotation marks, REPL. Then I press enter and it brings me into REPL. In REPL you can play around with loads of things and I'm going to be using map so I'm going to import pin and also import map then um, I can go map dot then tab and it'll show me everything that's on the board on my um, on my board in MicroPython to be able to set up a component we need to um, know its number now I've randomly randomly selected the buzzer and to find out the buzzer's number, you just go map dot, then the name, which is weo underscore buzzer, and I'll show you its number, 51. So 51 is what we would use in the code. Or if you wanted it more readable, you could use map dot weo underscore buzzer. We've got some MicroPython code running on the weo terminal. Now this code isn't ours, but we've had a lot of problems doing a handful of things. For example, we've been using PWM and the frequencies just aren't right. So this doesn't seem that robust, where if you have seen our circuit pattern video, um, you'll know that the code worked almost immediately. I've just watched about the video and noticed I said that ape was in dot local, then bin. It was actually in my home folder, then dot local, then bin. We tried using SBI and I2C, but after a while we had to give up because we couldn't get them working. We also tried using PWM, but the frequencies just were not changing at all. So we found that the MicroPython experience on the Wii terminal today is less than ideal, but they may improve that in the future. So although we use MicroPython in most of our projects, for the Wii terminal we'd probably stick to CircuitPython and Arduino. Don't forget to check out our website, googleapps.com, um, which has articles on this um, video and others as well. Um, links will be in the description. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Have a good day. Bye.